don't know if all the public's aware, but there's a Oregon law, uh, Oregon Revised Statute 204-112, subparagraph 3, that sets forward the task of the County Compensation Board, which is the three lay members of the County's Budget Committee, Mr. Morris, Mr. Rudisau, and Ms. Sevig. Um, that Compensation Board sets the salaries for elected officials uh, once annually. I just want to go real quickly over uh, the law that governs how you determine what you will recommend. And essentially, as I said, you do meet once annually to review the compensation paid to the persons comparably employed by the state of Oregon, local public bodies, private businesses, all within a labor market deemed appropriate by that compensation board for each elective officer. So you're setting a salary for the particular person, not for the office. The County Compensation Board shall take into account such factors as the number of employees supervised and the size of the budget administered by each elective officer, the duties and responsibilities of each elective officer, <clears throat> and the compensation paid to subordinates or other appointed employees who serve in positions of comparable management responsibility. The County Compensation Board shall prepare and approve by majority vote a recommended compensation schedule for the elective officers and shall submit the recommended compensation schedule to the county governing body. I read that specifically because a lot of times people, member of the public will want to know why don't we pay what another county's paying or why don't we base their pay on the economy here in our county or why don't we base it on any number of factors and those are all factors that aren't listed in the law. These are the things that are in the law that says what you consider in terms of making a recommendation for compensation. Um, currently what the uh, County Compensation Committee has done is essentially used internal equity as the benchmark for determining what the range of salaries should be for elected officials. And that's because with regard to appointed officials in the county, those considerations of positions of comparable management responsibility within the labor market, which includes private businesses and employees comp uh, in state positions of comparable management responsibility, are all considered in our appointed employees plan. So by using the internal equity, you assure to some extent that those considerations are made that are required by the law. What the Salary Review Committee had asked of our HR staff was to take each elected position and classify it as if it were going to be appointed within the county. Now that was difficult to do because most of the senior management positions in the county have more uh, strenuous job requirements such as you know master's degrees or bachelor's degrees and a, a minimum number of years of senior executive level management experience like 10 years. Most of the elected officials positions don't require any, uh, any level of education. Um, or any prior senior level management ex executive experience. But for those specific criteria, what the HR department looked at was the duties and responsibilities of the job, including the number of employees supervised, the amount of the budget, and those such items. With that, each elected official was marked against a similar position within that appointed official's uh, compensation plan. In other words, the equivalent of the appointed uh, official's compensation plan. Our Salary Review Committee did meet in a properly noticed public meeting on Tuesday of this week uh, during the 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock lunch hour uh, to discuss uh, how they wanted to proceed with this year's setting of the compensation for elected officials. Essentially, um, the committee uh, discussed the current process as I just described and uh, also heard from our county sheriff regarding an alternate proposal for the sheriff's salary. Um, probably about half the meeting was spent discussing the sheriff's concerns with his salary and the other half was, uh, of the meeting was spent really discussing what the current plan is and how elected, uh, elected officials are treated in the plan. Essentially uh, what the budget committee, sorry, the county compensation committee ultimately determined was that they would provide the same uh, cost of living adjustment that will be afforded to all other appointed management and confidential employees, which is July 1st, a 1.75% increase within the equivalent step of the step plan that the elected and appointed officials are in. 
as well as providing a step increase equivalent to that of the appointed pay plan of January 1st of 2016. So the COLA adjustment will be made in July, 1.75%, and then each of the eligible elected officials will move up to the next place in the pay plan that would be equivalent to the next higher step in the pay plan. Uh, I was asked to present this on behalf of the County Compensation Board, um, and I'm hoping I'm doing a good job covering uh, the issues that they discuss. Uh, you have before you an order which you actually will deliberate on, but I kind of want to go through the order real quick so the public's directly compensation is. I'm going to skip the whereas's because they're not what binds the order, uh, but essentially if you go to number one it says effective the first full pay period of July 2015, which will be July 13th of 2015. For the cost of living adjustment, elected officials will receive a 1.75 percent adjustment consistent with the COLA that Jackson County non-representative management and confidential employees will receive. The COLA applies only to the county stipend portion of the district attorney's salary. Most people may or may not know that the district attorney's, the district attorney, not the deputy district attorney positions, but the district attorney is compensated by the state and the county provides an additional payment uh, in the form of a stipend uh, for purposes of I mean, um, So underneath that is the chart. This will show uh, the assessor with the cost of living adjustment moving from 97000 $968 to $99,673.60. The clerk moving from $91,020.80 to $92,622.40. Commissioner positions one and three, which are Commissioner Dyer and Commissioner Roberts, moving from $88,857.60 to $90,417.60. I want to stop right there and make a brief statement that one of the commissioners uh, has chosen to elect, elected to not accept that salary, but the salary would be set at that, and that commissioner would have the option of continuing to not accept the full salary, as would any other elected official if that's what they were to choose to do. Uh, commissioner Bridenthal would go from $93,308.80 to $94,952. The district's attorney stipend would go from $11 dollars and one cent per hour or twenty two thousand nine hundred and eighty dollars to eleven twenty an hour which is twenty three thousand two hundred ninety six dollars that is just the stipend portion of the salary the state pays the base salary the justice of the peace uh, would go from ninety seven thousand three hundred seventy two dollars and eighty cents to eighty thousand seven hundred sixty six dollars and forty cents the sheriff would go from one hundred and nine thousand one hundred fifty eight dollars and forty cents to one hundred and eleven thousand dollars and seventy two cents uh, the Salary Review Committee did discuss the Sheriff's salary, and I want to make a couple of points here. We had a glitch in the payroll uh, um, order that was approved by the Budget budget Committee and Salary Review Committee last year, and that it would have set the sh uh, sheriff, a new sheriff entering into the position at step one. There is a law in Oregon that requires the sheriff to be the highest salaried employee in the sheriff's office. There is no law like that for other elected officials, so it only exists for the sheriff in this case. The other uh, staff working in the sheriff's office was making just slightly than $107,000. So in order to comply with the law, the sheriff actually came in at a step higher than what the Salary Review Committee uh, initially set the salary at. So that's why this shows them going from step two to step three, where normally a sheriff would have went from step one to step two. Uh, the surveyor is going from or $624 to $79,996.80. That is just the portion attributable to the 1.75% that will be effective July 1st of 2015. I'm going to go down to number three, and I want to just talk about uh, what the step uh, increases mean for those positions. And I do want to run, run through them for the purposes of the public being informed of what they are, uh, and also you have a public comment period, so people might be able to comment on it if they would like to. So over and above the uh, cost of living adjustment I just met, and also moving from July 1st to January 1st of 2016, the assessor will go from $99,673.60 to $104,665.60. That's the equivalent of step four in a step six pay plan. <clears throat> the clerk's salary will be $92,622.40. It does not go up from the COLA that I recommended because the clerk is at the, uh, the equivalent of the top step, which is step six. So there is no additional step for the clerk. 
Commissioner positions one and three will go from $90,417.60 to $94,952, which is going from step one to step two in the equivalent uh, pay plan. And commissioner position number two, which is Commissioner Bryanthal, will go from $94,952 to $99,673.60. That's moving from step two to step three. The district attorney stipend um, will go from uh, $23,296 to $24,460.80. And remember, that is just a portion of their salary. Uh, Justice of the Peace, once again, is also one of the positions that's at the top equivalent step already of step six, so their salary will be just what the COLA provided, which is $80,766.40. The sheriff will go from $111,072 to $116,604.80, which is step three of a, uh, the equivalent of step three of a step six pay plan. And the surveyor will go from $79,996.80 to $83,990.40. Um, that pretty much explains what, the, what will happen with the pay. The other charts are to record the fact of that process. The last chart, uh, the Salary Review Committee annually has recommended to the full budget committee that if a newly, if a current elected official leaves office, either because they resign, uh, move on, pass away or no longer able to serve for any other reason, then anyone who would be newly appointed or newly elected would come in at step one of the pay plan. That's what the last chart reflects, that continued policy of the uh, County Compensation Board and the Budget Committee for, for that. There are a couple of asterisks with that. One is that because we had the incident with the sheriff this year of needing to be the highest salaried employee in his department, there's an asterisk for that, that if someone is appointed or newly elected and there's a person in their department that would make more than step one, they will go to the next higher step in pay plan, wherever that may be. And the other asterisk is for the district attorney because obviously they're in a stipend and they wouldn't uh, be in the equivalent of a pay plan. Mr. Chair, I tried to rush through that, but make sure we got all the points out to the public and I'm willing to answer any questions or sit down and let the public have their comment. Questions? Thank you, Danny. That was an excellent um, review of, of, of the plan. Um, I, I really appreciate you walking through it in the, in the level of detail that you have. You've done that every year um, in these meetings for, what, the six or seven years that we've had this compensation plan. It's always been part of the public record. Um, the public um, uh, has the opportunity in your presentation to understand how we've laid out this compensation structure and what to expect in the future for compensation increases for elected officials. And I personally am very supportive of, of this plan and the way that it's come together over the past few years. I feel like it's a very fair and equitable way, very transparent way for the public to understand how we compensate elected officials. So thank you for, once again, laying that out for the public. You're welcome. Anything further? Well, I agree with Craig very much so. And uh, thank you again, Nick. Mr. Chair, I just want to make one comment for the record. Because I'm the face that presents the information, oftentimes I get attributed responsibility for this. Mr. Morris pointed this out, but this is this county compensation board's recommendation, not mine. I'm reporting your meeting and your outcome to the public. Thank you. Well, also, as chairman of the uh, elected official salary review committee, I asked Danny if he would make this presentation for me, so I appreciate you doing that. I appreciate the opportunity to do it, and if you weren't wearing a tie, I wouldn't have kidded you about that. <laughs> <laughs>